Welcome your faces back to episode number 65 of the series Profit or Loss. I buy faulty electronic items from eBay, attempt to fix them and then sell them on for a bit of profit to hopefully make a little bit of money. We currently sit ourselves at £543.30. Fun fact, so far in the series, that is our highest amount. Could we potentially in today's episode break through £600? Let's see. There seems to be a bunch of paper in here. Oh, wait a minute. There's some writing on this one. Why 09 is backwards, really? What I will say is whoever has packaged this has done a really, really good job. It is in fact a faulty PlayStation 5. Now, usually at this point, I'd confirm how much I paid, but I've bought a lot of PS5s recently, so I need to have a look at the condition to match it up with what it is I actually paid for it. I mean, overall condition is fine. I mean, it's a little bit dirty down at the bottom here, back of the console. Looks good. Let's see if it's been opened. I think, if I'm honest with you, I think this one has been opened. I think I paid for one that has no warranty sticker. Three, two, one. It has been opened. Look. Here we go. And they've not directly removed the warranty sticker. They've just gone straight through it. Confirmed, finally. For this one, I actually paid a total of 150 pounds and i think smart joey kind of got it for 150 because he said the warranty sticker has been breached so therefore i'd uh, i'd put an offer in for 150 i think that's what happened so as always let's give this a quick test run a little bit of a crackle there in the uh, in the power supply do we get any power here we go nothing any beep i'm just going to keep pressing it doesn't sound like we get any beep okay so completely deaded before we get the console stripped down a huge thank you to today's video sponsor pcb way pcb way is the solution for all your pcb needs imagine this scenario you're in dire need of a reliable service to print some custom circuit boards those boards need to be great quality have fast shipping and be at a very good price pcb way have you sorted simply start your instant quote and customize your pcb to how you want it anything from thickness to solder mask color and then in a few simple steps you'll be ready to check out pcb way also offer services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, and sheet metal fabrication. Why not check out the gift store where you can buy preheaters, soldering irons, multimeters, and much, much more. Head on over to PCBWay.com to get started. Bad news instantly for me is that we, we, we're obviously missing a screw here for the disk drive, so why has that been opened before? And we're missing a screw here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and say, I don't think the console has gone any further deeper than this. And the reason being is because this tape here is on there. Like it's it's it looks factory fresh, I believe. And it's it's quite easily noticeable when this tape has been taken off. Saying that, I might have just contradicted myself because this has been taken off, which would insinuate this has been removed from the ball, as well as the fact all of these stickers have been ripped. So please ignore anything I've said in the past 30 seconds. Momentous of truth. I want us to see this all together. I left one screwing. Second moment of truth. Here we go. Oh dear, I, I've i never seen something like that and it stinks, by the way. What on earth? That is absolutely horrendous, the size of that. I think it's pretty safe to say something here went bang. Oh my gosh. I am just going to confirm that the power supply is all good. This board stinks of electrics. Those who know will know the smell. What reading do we get on the actual power supply itself? 12 volts. Okay, so we have we have a good working power supply, which is good news. So I must be right in thinking here that we have a, uh, a 12 volt short because where this explosion monstrosity has happened is here. There's a lot of 12 volt rails around this area. So I'm going to assume it's a 12 volt short, but let's test. Multimeter in continuity mode. It's our 12 volt line. Yeah, I mean, that's one ohm. That's a dead short to ground. Okay. Which is naturally going to be affecting all of our other rails as well. But just based off quick inspection, like on the 5 volt that we have up here, we don't have a short to ground, which is good. And on the back, we have our 3.3, which is also not shorted to ground. Okay. So it just, it, I think it does seem to just be the 12 volt. Don't actually think there's going to be anything we're going to be able to do to save this board. This damage is catastrophic. Look at it. And when I tell you the smell is disgusting, oh, I'll put some IPA on it and just get rid of as much charring as possible. I'm gonna to have to try and dig out as much of that as I can as well. But we just have this black char that's left all over the board. Look at the state of these cotton swabs. Completely done for. Let's get a good old toothy B in here as well. With some hard bristles. That is literally gone right through the board. This is gone, this, uh, yeah, I think, 
I think this has gone all the way through. I think we've got a separate layer here. I guess the only thing I, I find as a weakness with the Andon Star microscope that I have, which is a, a digital microscope, it's difficult to get a depth perception on everything, you know? So what I find myself doing is like tipping the board up. This is just layers and layers and layers of board. I feel like I'm literally digging here. I don't even know what would have caused this. Still going, look, and this is me really getting the tweezers in there. I wonder if it smells so bad. This goes really deep. It's like a tooth extraction. The whole the whole tweezer is through the board, by the way. That's the other side. <laughs> this is so bad. The really, really sad part in this whole situation is that all other areas of the board, HDMI port, HDMI retimer, the power rail down here, everything else seems to be absolutely fine. Is there a possibility that we could clear out the short if we kept on digging slash destroyed this board a little bit more? Yeah, of course, like that. that is definitely something that is a possibility. But would I feel comfortable ever selling this board? No, there's not a chance. I, I would not be selling this board in any way, shape or form. The only way that I would sell this board is if I was saying, look, don't apply any power to it. Please just use this as, as a donor. But because the rest of the board is in such good condition, and I'm going to go ahead and assume it is just the 12 watt rail, a lot of those other components, the HDMI retimer, the SSD controller, the south bridge, I feel like I could do with this board. Chassis is in pretty good condition as well. So I think I'm going to write off the £150 and I'll, I'll have to take the hit as a minus. But what I gain here in, in exchange for the parts, I think is probably worth it for £150. And I guess just for your confirmation. So that, that's this side of the board. I'm going to show you what it should look like. Okay. That is what it should look like. So we have a couple of small caps. We've got these two caps here, another two caps in this MOSFET. And if we turn the board around, obviously this is the state of the uh, the bad one. On a good one, this is what that area looks like. So there's not much on these rails. I'm going to have to assume one of these caps has done some absolutely massive damage to that board because we've got four caps here, but on the one we're working on, all of those caps are gone. Or it was actually internal, which is then just melted away. As for the actual chassis itself, you can see here we have this burn mark, but that seems to be the only bit of damage, which is now gone. So I'll be able to use this as a donor. Lovely. Well, I obviously can't end it there. So uh, let's get into item number two for this video. This is another PlayStation 5 that I paid a total of £150 for. So exactly the same sort of price. And no, unfortunately, it's not one of the slim ones. Now, weirdly enough, this one, I think, I, again, I probably messed up. So I paid £150. It does say it has a motherboard issue and won't boot up without a replacement or fix. That person clearly would know then or has inspected the console to know that it's going to be a motherboard issue and not a power supply issue. I'm assuming anyway, but I think I'd be right to assume. Now, let's plug this in and see, just confirm that we definitely get no power. Okay, we get a crackle. Come on, please. I need to try and soften my losses today. We push the power button. Okay, we get a beep. Wait a minute. Wait, it's a blue light. Okay, is it just, is it going to turn off? That's a white light. Okay, plug in the HDMI lead. Unless they were saying it from a perspective of it has a software issue and they've looked up what the error code is and therefore it's then saying that they need a replacement board. Perhaps that's the situation that we've got. I, I get a picture and everything. I'm just running through the initial setup to see what the situation is. I bet it's going to be something like it crashes when it's playing games. In my opinion, when I need to do some heavy testing, uh, Fortnite is usually the go-to. I've just put a disc in the disk drive as well. Okay, so it's reading it. Just get that installed at the same time if we can. So again, I'll be back with you after I've done a little bit of testing and you might see some footage of Fortnite just cutting out randomly. The PlayStation has just turned off. I'm just feeling it at the back of it to see if it's like really hot or not. I'm going to try and turn it back on. When I try and turn it back on, I get a beep, but no light. And then if I turn it on again, it turns on. I wonder if we're going to get like an overheating message. I mean, I hope I get an overheating message. Still thinking about it. It's gone to a white light, nothing on the screen, back to a blue light. Sony logo, three beeps, one turned off properly. Nothing about overheating. System, error history, no error history either. I have had it before where the console will just shut down because it is that hot and it doesn't actually log the fact that it overheated. I've had that. So let's take it apart and see if it is by somewhat any miracle, just a little bit clogged. Okay, here we go. Is the warranty sticker intact? I still have no idea. It is. Okay, so even more of a chance that this just could be clogged how's the inside of that fan looking we have you see there's a little bit of dust here which is not good for the console i wonder what the radiator is looking like down here took an absolute gamble with this one with lack of description how's this fan looking it's not looking 
bad at all if i'm honest i was really hoping for something a lot worse but it doesn't look too bad at all and unfortunately it's the same almost on the grill down here you can't really see because of the way that i've got the lights i'll strip it down further and show you in a second looking at the liquid metal situation looks absolutely fine as it does on the chassis side of things as well i've got the actual heat sink out and as you can see it is pretty much spotless there's no dust build up here it's a tiny bit here but that's not going to cause our issue as well as the actual power supply itself there's no clogging here which is something we look out for as well so i think i have a little bit of a development in this story and i'm going to try and explain it the best i can i thought to myself if the console is turning off then there is a chance that it's reporting that error to the south bridge when it eventually turns back on so why not try a little bit of uart which is a diagnosing tool to see exactly what it is that's going wrong with the console originally when i tried uart i didn't clear the previous code list and there was so many every time i kept typing something there would be a new code so i kind of wanted to start fresh in which case i cleared all of the errors that were previously on the console and went through that boot sequence again to the point where i turned the console on just to make sure that it was writing that code to the south bridge the error code that we got was 8006 quadruple zero and it says that there's an apu vrm power failure on six phases and the one below that exactly the same apu vrm m6 phases power fail could be wrong but i'm pretty confident that is down here now you what you will see is that i've removed the majority of the viscous paste that was here because i thought to myself if i potentially just power up the ps5 i wonder if any of these actually get warm more so at least than any others because that might indicate that one of them is getting too hot and overheating the console that's why it's shutting down so i went and did exactly that i powered the console up with the thermal camera just to see if any of them were acting strange and it turns out majority of them were actually pulling a decent amount of heat around about the 30 to 40 degree mark which is acceptable what i did however notice is that the two at the bottom weren't really heating up in fact they would some sometimes get like pulses of heat and then that would dissipate very very quickly so what i'm actually thinking is we've got these two mosfets down here that aren't really getting hot so i'm going to replace them i'm going to replace two of these i'm going to replace this one and this one then I'm basically going to try again and if it still happens i'll probably go to the next two that are up and if it happens again the next two that are up so on and so forth there are eight in total one two three four five six seven eight but it's these six here that i'm actually going to focus on these top two if i need to try and change them at the end i will but i'm fairly confident it's probably not going to be one of these let's crack on with that process now you may actually notice that when we go to do this work we have all of these um caps down here right now they will pop very very easily under direct heat and the area we're working with is right next to them what i personally like to do is use the SSD cover. I simply just slot the SSD cover in between there and there so it stops the direct heat affecting these caps. I wish there was an easier way to get viscous paste off. So this is this is a donor board that I'm taking this from. I'm gonna take these first two, lift off that paste. You do have to be super careful working in this area because there's so many small components around the MOSFETs as well. It's not just the MOSFETs. And we don't want any of this stuff getting underneath the IC when we're doing the soldering. So slowly just remove it away. Coming with our little big heat sink that we have on the right. Take this one first. I'm just going to apply some flux around the area. It's going to get pretty messy anyway. There's one. And exactly the same for this one as well. Russell board is nice and hot. This is our donor, by the way. Here we go. We have to clean up here as well. Same procedure here now. Exactly the same. A little bit of flux on both of them. Goes one. Shouldn't have to add any solder here. See how we get on. Okay, come in with some flux. Do this one first. See how we get on. Now I'm going to squeeze down just to make sure that we get some good contact here. That's what we need. Okay, that's that one. And again, just going for a quick push down. Should be okay. And now look at this one. That one's almost exactly where it needs to be. Just potentially a little push down. Just give that a nice clean. No components missing by the looks of it. Everywhere, everything looks like it is in the correct place. Right, I wonder if it was those two. Or it very well could be any of these, by the way. Uh, I'm just I'm just going with these two because they weren't showing any signs of life under the thermal cam. Okay, pretty much ready to test. Let's power it on. We're just basically looking for it to not turn off uh it still powers on 
which is really, really good. Does it go to a white light is the question. It does go to a white light. It is just rebooting, which is why we don't have an image on the screen just yet. There we go. It's rebooted. Okay. I'm going to also have a look on the thermal cam. It has The situation hasn't changed. They're not getting hot at all. So we've not made it any better by the looks of it. We've also not made it any worse. Okay. So it still powers on. So it's good. We didn't, yeah, we didn't ruin this PS5. I'm going to launch Fortnite and this is where supposedly it turns off after a couple of seconds. Those MOSFETs I changed still, they're not heating up in any way, shape or form. Sat idle at 30 degrees. Fortnite's connecting, still nothing. Okay, they're getting a little bit warm, but the same sort of story. They're like, they're getting hot, but they're not. Maybe we'll be okay, maybe not. Who knows? Here on the cinematic, skip it. And it shuts off. Okay, like I said, not made it any worse though, which is always good. In which case, we'll uh, we'll try the next two. Every single time I do this, by the way, I have to reapply the liquid metal just to make sure because I don't have the fan attached, so nothing's really cooling down the system. So I have to apply the liquid metal to make sure that it doesn't overheat before we can actually give it the test in Fortnite. So this process is taking a long time. Right, second test. Let's see if it was either of those two MOSFETs potentially. Launching Fortnite, we turn on, we're good. Haven't messed up that bad. Can we get onto the Fortnite menu? Seems to be the task here. So where we got up to last time, skip the cutscene. Is it gonna shut off? Huh. It's still on. Oh, it shut off. Okay, I don't know if that got a little bit further than before. I think it did, but I'm now starting to think, did that overheat because it didn't have the fan? I'm gonna reassemble this one a bit more, put the fan back on and see if we get any further. And it just turned off there before I even got a chance to do anything. So we still seem to be having the issue. The next two. Testing again. Here we go. Power. Good. Come on, don't do it to me now. Just, just hang in the lobby for 30 seconds to a minute, please. It didn't even get to the uh, to the cinematic that time and it shut off. Okay, last two it is. Of course, that is the situation. I think worth mentioning as well, I have just measured. You see these resistors here and there are a few resistors on the left-hand side, but not on the left-hand side all the way down. I have measured these resistors and I get 2.8 ohms. I've checked the soldering for the MOSFETs I've replaced and they all seem to be okay. Besides, we're still getting the exact same error as what we did in the first place. So I don't think it's because of that. All right, let's change out the last two. That is the last bit of testing for that specific 12 volt rail. Now is the time that we find out if I have scammed myself and given myself the wrong information, which I really hope is not the case. But what are the chances is gonna be these last two? Fairly slim. Give me the good news, please. Play the game. Bum 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 bum. So apparently it was it was it was none of those MOSFETs. Apparently, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what you are is saying. See if it's the same thing. We we definitely definitely we have to call that a GG to me. Let's look on the bright side. Practice is practice, right? So I have tried UART, and this is what I get. This one here, C002303, is the first one that I get in the error log. So this is error log zero. Now it says that the APU is not responding and it's trying to reboot. In my head, logically, I was thinking, well, that's not really the first thing that happens because the console is shutting down because of an error, and then it's trying to reboot. But I have flushed the system now and cleared the error log uh, about three or four times just to make sure this is the correct sequence and this is exactly what I get every single time I reset UART. So that's the first one. Then we get this one, which is unknown chip slash data related error. And then last but not least, we get this one, which is unexpected power outage shutdown failure. So it's now not reporting that we're having an issue on that power line, but this is now like finding a needle in a haystack. If I don't sell this and decide to keep it as inventory, that's that's minus 300 pound for, you know, a good few spare parts and stuff, but Sally is not going to be happy with me. I don't really see how any other way I'm going to be able to troubleshoot this without replacing, you know, it might be the RAM, so what going through the eight individual RAM ICs we have on the board, the south bridge and all that stuff as well. It's the rails all present because the console turns on, it's that intermittent horrible issue where it'll just turn off when you go to boot into a game and there's only so much time i can spend on one board so i'm gonna put this back together list on ebay exactly what it is that i've done so i've replaced all of those mosfets down that rail and see if i can at least recoup the 150 ebay sales will come out of that so i'll be in a negative for this one specifically anyway let's head on over to sally spectacular spreadsheet to minus 
those costs. It's not a good day today. If I'm honest, we had a very, very good run. So our total cost in today's video is going to be 300 pounds. I think I will be able to get 150, which is the exact same as what I paid for one of the PS5s that I'm going to list back up. That gives us a total loss in today's video of minus 163 pounds 50, minus 163.50. We had such a good run. Puts our total back to 379 pounds and 80 pence. Now, I think this is just going to be a little minor hiccup in the road and we'll definitely get back to winning ways shortly i hope if you enjoyed this episode i'll leave the last one in this series up here thank you very very much for watching as always have a great week slash weekend and i will see you in the next one peace